Last time we took a look at the differences between the movie and comic book of the 1989 Batman film. And now it's time to do the same for the sequel, Batman Returns. Now as you can tell in this comic book, the artist is not the same as in the previous movie adaptation. The penciler was Steve Irwin, not him. This guy's last name starts with an E. And the inker for the comic was Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, a guy with two first and last names apparently. But sadly, the work of these two combined with the colorist Tom McCraw, they still couldn't compare to the artwork we got for the first comic book movie adaptation of Batman. Not only that, but it appears that this comic book version is in fact a toned down censored version of the movie. I guess it makes sense seeing as parents complained about the amount of violence that was seen in the film. So this comic was probably forced to be toned down so that kids could check it out without seeing a hint of gore or blood. And with that in mind, let's take a look at the differences between the movie and the comic. After Max Shrek pushed Selina Kyle out the window, he leaves without anyone seeing what just happened. In the comic, the first major difference is that the moment Max Shrek pushes Selina Kyle out the window, Charles Shrek shows up to see what happened, and Max says, Chip, it was terrible. I leaned over and accidentally knocked her out. And Chip replies, she jumped. She was depressed. Max replies, yes, yes, boyfriend trouble? And Chip says, stress. This is a good way to demonstrate that both Max and his son Charles Shrek are corrupt men willing to do what it takes to get away with certain crimes. The next difference is in the fight against the Penguin's clown henchmen. In the scene where Batman uses a batarang to take out the surrounding henchmen, the comic book version has Batman taking them out slightly different as expected, but one of the henchmen happens to be that fat guy that would later be killed off by Batman after he straps him with dynamite and shoves him down into the manhole where the dynamite explodes. In the comic book, they don't include the fight with the big guy, but he is present in the fight where Batman takes down a clown with dynamite. In the movie, Batman removes the dynamite strapped to him and walks away without it going off. In the comic, Batman knocks out the clown, he then removes the dynamite strapped to him, and tosses it into an open manhole. We skip all the way to the moment when the Penguin retreats back into the sewers after Batman revealed to the public what the Penguin's true plan was all along. And the only change that was made was that the fat clown that questioned the Penguin about kidnapping children was replaced by a thin clown that gets shot off screen. When the Penguin receives a message from Batman by the chimp, the message informs him that the children are safe and that he failed to kidnap them all. The penguin looks at the chimp, tells it, Are you the messenger? He then grabs his gun umbrella and shoots a random clown and says that it doesn't make sense to shoot the messenger. Also, I think the clown that was shot here is the same clown that decided to bail out with the remaining clowns when Batman was heading towards them. This scene wasn't included in the comic. The penguin just decides to leave the cave without seeing if any of his goons would stick around. So there's a chance that this clown was killed in the comic book version and not in the movie. When Batman finally catches up to the penguin near the end, their fight is slightly different but with the same conclusion. As for the moment when Batman catches up to Catwoman and Max Shrek, this also goes slightly different but with the same conclusion. Batman removes his mask in both versions, in the movie he rips it off and in the comic he just removes it. Something he should have done in the movie, but I'm guessing it would look weird seeing as the mask connects with the neck and shoulders. When Max shoots Selina, every shot hits a different limb instead of her torso. He even shoots the taser, breaking it into pieces, but she still electrocutes the two of them, but without the shocking kiss included. When the penguin emerges from the water, in the comic, he has a little extra dialogue, and once he grabs an umbrella thinking that it's the umbrella gun, he tells Batman, you know, without the mask, you're drop dead handsome, so drop dead. That's when he pulls the trigger and it turns out to be the wrong umbrella. In the movie, the Penguin didn't really have a reaction after seeing that Bruce Wayne was Batman, but that's because he didn't really have time to waste, as he quickly died after seeing that he got the wrong umbrella out. But I'm guessing this was once again added as it's more of a villainous pun that could distract from the fact that he immediately dies like in the movie. Only here, he isn't covered in blood. And that happens to be the very last difference from the movie. Like the previous one, many scenes are cut or shortened so that it fits to tell the movie a lot easier. Only this time it was aimed for a much younger audience. The art style isn't bad, I can recognize the facial similarities with the actors. Michelle Pfeiffer's character looks the best and most recognizable of them all. The least recognizable would have to be Michael Keaton. 
The facial features are there, but it just doesn't work as good as how he looks in the previous Batman movie comic book adaptation. There's even an image of Bruce Wayne that was recycled in the next page, which is a bit lazy. In the end, this is worth checking out, but not as recommended as the previous one. It would have been nice to see that amazing art style by Jerry Ordway, but since the comic book was toned down for kids, it probably wouldn't make it any more entertaining. Speaking of censorship, the Penguin mentions McDonald's near the end, which reminds me that when the movie was out in theaters, McDonald's toys were advertised, but after parents complained about the movie being too violent for kids, they pulled all the Batman Returns toys out of the McDonald's toy line. Maybe you can take this as a hint that the comic book was doomed to be toned down for kids as well. But with that said, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and if so, be sure to leave a like, share with others, and subscribe if you haven't. And if you'd like to see some extra content or you'd like to see your name at the end of the videos, then feel free to support the channel by donating a single dollar to my Patreon. There are also additional perks for donating more than a buck. The link is on the description along with the link to my Facebook page, Tumblr, DeviantArt, and Twitter. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.